Hi, this is Bonnie with another Block of the Month Club. This would be Block 4. I'm going to start out by doing just a little recap of what we've done so far. I chose a fabric collection that I had purchased, and then I added complementary pieces to it that didn't necessarily come with the collection, but would look nice with it. So I chose those fabrics, and I'll show you those in a second. Remember, I have mentioned before to use a contrasting or a neutral color. Now, this is a light taupe color thread. You see it's almost gone. I'm almost ready to get another spool because I use this color for most of my quilting. It's a combination light and dark. It doesn't stand out too badly against the darks and it looks okay with the lights. So it just kind of blends together. I also chose, and I have many different quilting rulers and quilting blocks. And the more you quilt, the more that you will make a collection of all these different sizes. Um, I have a nice sharp pair of sewing scissors. If I'm going to be cutting narrow pieces or smaller pieces, then I use the smaller ones. If I'm cutting a larger piece, then I'll use my larger scissors. Our first block that we did together was called the churn dash. And this is, as you see, and my light shining through, um, this is a combination of browns and rusts and blues and neutrals. I am making a king size quilt. So I need three blocks of each design in order to finish that block or that entire quilt. Now this block ends up 10 and a half by 10 and a half inch square. Our goal is to have, and my goal is to have 36 12 inch squares or 12 and a half inch squares before they're sewn together. So at some point, in order to make this 10 and a half inch square larger, I'm going to add a border all the way around and I'll talk more about that later. So I took my combination of fabrics and this is one of my churn dash designs. This is again using the same pattern, but a different combination of the colors. Each combination makes your block look so different and gives you a total different design. And this is the dark one. Looks very similar when I'm holding it up. Um, this one has dark brown where the other one had dark blue. When they're down and they'll have the backing fabric and the batting in between, they will look very dark. The second block that we did was Sparrow in the Window. And this one, again, I'm using all the same colors, just putting them together in a different combination. So there's one, same pattern. This was block number two. Same pattern, just a different combination of colors. Same pattern, different combination of colors. This one's much busier because I use the more, um, the pattern or the fabric that has more of a design in it rather than more of a solid. So it looks much different, busier. Then we have this one, and this was called Broken Window. And this one actually took, it's an easy pattern to do, but it took quite a long time to do because you have your half, all your half square triangles in it. So now we're up to block number four. And let me just put these to the side so I can get to the ones I need to work on today. And this one is called, um, let me see for sure, because each one has a different name. This is called a quarter foil. And because you design and you put together four quarters of the quilt before you assemble it. So this is the finished block and we're going to start out by showing you how to get it get started and to assemble all your different blocks before you put them together in your large block. 
So I cut out all of my pieces and I had a nice stack of your two and a half by four and a half inch block. And then I, of this color, and then I had another stack of four of the blue. And here we're going to make the flying geese pattern. And that will be assembled with this two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. So to start out with, I took my two and a half by four and a half inch blue rectangle. I had cut 16 two and a half inch squares. And on eight of those, I put the line down the center and that will be the line that guides the foot of my sewing machine. That's not my sewing line, that's the guide for sewing. Um, you'll put the side of your um, foot down that line. So now I took, and to start out with, I need to make this into the flying goose pattern. So I put my square on my rectangle. They're both two and a half inches wide. This is two and a half inches. This is four and a half inches. Because what we're going to do is put line up the corners and we're going to sew right down that line. And this is a little different than your, um, your half square triangles. This one you are going to sew right down that line. Then once you have sewn it, you're going to fold the other half of that square on top of itself. And you're gonna make sure that your top edge and your side edges line up nice and even. Once you're sure that has happened, then you're going to take your scissors and you are, I'll put this down a little. You'll take your scissors so that you can cut the extra fabric away and you cut it so you leave a quarter of an inch from that stitching line. And then when you hold it up, you see that now you have completed half of your flying goose pattern. Then you're going to always remember to, when you are assembling your flying geese patterns, always start by putting your square on the same side of your rectangle. I always put it on the right hand side of my rectangle, probably because I'm right handed, so that, be, that comes natural. The reason that you do that is for this little point up here. What you need to do is make sure that when you put this side down, this is always going to be the under point of your point of your pattern. So now I'll put my other square that has my sewing line on it. I'll line it up on the other side of that rectangle. Then I'm going to sew. Once I have sewn, I'm going to fold it back to make sure that my corner and my sides match that they line up nice and even. Once I'm sure that happens, then I'm going to cut this a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line and then open it up right on that stitching line. Now, this is the point that we need to be watchful of right here. Ideally, when you line your blocks up, you're your seam should hit right at the very tip of that triangle. And so you don't see any of this, the two square corners at all. It would hit right there. Now, sometimes as hard as you try, you're going to end up maybe with a little bit of that background fabric showing. The reason that you always want to start on the same side so it crosses here in the same direction, not only so that it lays down the same on every single block, but if by chance 
you don't go all the way down to that point, it will always have the same overlap showing. It won't be a different overlap. Once you have taken and you have stitched those all down, then you're going to take your plain two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle and you're going to sew it to the bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance so that you can have this unit all stitched together. Oh, there goes the thread in the floor. Um, so you're going to have four units called quarter foil. Everything you do, you're gonna do in fours, except for the center block. So then I will have four of these units all assembled. If we were to go back to our pattern, the first page, and I, I'll give you the download, that you can download this pattern. And you see, here's the finished block. Because this is done in a different color combination, it looks so much different than mine. This just isn't a color scheme I would use. It wouldn't go in my house, the yellows and these lighter florals. So I've chosen a color that will go in my home. And it's always the country colors. So now we just completed this section where we did our flying geese. And then we finished this page where we did the flying geese and we put the two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle on the bottom. Now what we're going to do is assemble these four blocks. Remember quarter foil, everything is in groups of four. So we're going to assemble those four blocks. And here I have a block done. And to do this, it's very, very simple. You're going to have your eight squares left from the original 16 that you cut that you drew the line across. The, you'd use the lines across to do the, the flying geese. Well, now you're gonna use just your plain squares to assemble these blocks. So for each unit, you're going to need to have your medium and your light and your dark and your light. So they will line up and you will have your quarter square or one of your corners. Now, if you look, I have talked before about how important it is to press press, press as you go. So your seams will be nice and flat. So when I assemble this light, medium and light, and the dark and the light, I made sure that when I pressed it, my seams would go in the opposite direction. Now, where you have sewn your sewing line, if you butt them up against each other, because you have a quarter of an inch on this side and a quarter of an inch on the opposite side, that seam butts up against each other and it will give you a nice seam that will sew together and the middle will kind of hold itself together. So then when you open that up, you're going to have a perfectly matched corner, square corner here in the center. It'll be perfectly lined up, perfectly matched. So that's what I did in order to make each one of these quarters. So now we have four of this unit. And we have four of this unit. So now on your pattern that you've downloaded, you have now finished page one, page two, page three, and we're ready to start with page four. Now, what you're going to do is start to assemble, taking your quarter pieces, and you're going to start putting them together. 
watch your pattern because your pattern is going to be your guideline in which direction to make these colors run. So as you see, we need a quarter with the medium to the center. We need a quarter to the medium to the center. And all you do is rotate those quarters. And then you take your other section that we made with the flying geese with the rectangle underneath. And we will put the flying goose so that it's flying out, it's flying away. So this is what I have done in this unit. So I have my darks in my corners. I have my mediums in the pattern, it's yellow. In my design, it says medium blue. And then I have a light medium. That's my goose that's flying away. And actually in real life, the colors look so much better than they do on the camera. And then my two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. Once I have assembled that row, I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to assemble the center row. After I have assembled it, I'm going to go back to my iron and I'm going to press all those seams nice and flat so that the whole piece is very, very flat. Now I'll go to the center and I seem to be missing a page here of my design, no problem. Um, you'll have that missing page. I don't know what happened to mine. Now I'm going to take two of the quarters that I made like this, two of the quarter, quarters. I'm gonna have my geese flying out and I'm going to put my center square, which is four and a half by four and a half inches. I'm going to sew that all together with quarter inch seam allowances. And then I'm going to go to my ironing board and I'm gonna press all those seams nice and flat. The neater that you sew, the flatter that you press it. Um, first, I pressed it down on the inside and make sure I had all my raw edges down, all my seams going in the correct direction. Then I flipped it over and I steamed it again on the outside, on the right side. When you add the steam to it, the steam bends the fiber in the fabric. And when it bends the fiber in the fabric, it will stay bent. And when it dries, it will be a permanent bend. If I were to take this apart now, and try and bring the fabric back, especially the dark fabric, I'm going to end up with a little line because that line when or that pressing, when it presses it and presses the fibers over, it changes the color and it seals the color down. So if you were to open it, part of that color is going to stay on the opposite piece and you will always see that little line. At this point, probably you would have to replace this whole piece because you would see that stitching line and that fold line on a dark fabric. On a lighter fabric, you might get away with it, but with the darker fabric, you might have a line. So now I have the center piece done for my block. Now I'll go back and I will construct the last piece. And you notice that the first row and the last row are assembled exactly the same. The only difference is when you go to sew it together, you rotate the pieces. So now I'm going to take and I have my medium pieces in the center my darker pieces for the corners. And then I have my medium piece with my goose flying away. So now when I go to assemble that, and I'm gonna tip the camera down just a little, hopefully you can see it. Here would be my first panel. Here's my middle panel. And then here, again, I'm gonna try and dip it down. 
here would be the third panel. So when you put those all together, there's your completed panel. And all you had to do is construct two rows exactly the same and then the center row. And that will give you your finished block. You're going to sew these together with quarter inch seams. And you will notice that I tried very hard to press my seams so that they would butt up against each other and it would be a nice smooth sewing. And also it would be nice and smooth when I pressed it. So I'm gonna go back to my original square that is all sewn together and all pressed. And you see it's the same colors or the same combination collection of colors, except I have assembled them in a different way. So you actually get completely different looks of blocks by the way you assemble your colors. Um, this rust color was a piece that I had left from a different project. Um, it was a Civil War reproduction fabric quilt that I did. And this floral is a piece that I picked up I just thought it would blend together with the other colors and it did very nicely. So now that's center, that's focused in almost every piece that I assemble. I just hope that I won't run out. Now, one thing that you might want to think about, fabric has, when you buy it on the bolt, and I'll have to, I'll, for the next video, I'll have one out here, but your fabric will have the manufacturer's name, and then it usually has a lot number on the salvage of the fabric that you cut away. If you buy your fabric, any fabric store, more than likely on your sales receipt will be the name of the manufacturer of the fabric and the lot number. Sometimes the lot number is printed directly on the fabric, sometimes it is not but usually the, the manufacturer is printed in the salvage. So if you keep that receipt that will have the manufacturer and the lot number on the receipt, if you run out of a color, you can go back to the store where you purchased it and you can say, would you please try and find me two more yards of this fabric? Here's the manufacturer, here's the lot number, and then they can go to the computer and they can see if any other store in the area has that. Sometimes they have to go directly back to the manufacturer. Um, when I did an outfit for my son's wedding, I had a combination of satin, lace, and crepe and in the knit for the underskirt. And it was a line of fabric that was designed in all the colors, no matter where you purchased it, that number and that name, it would match perfectly. The lock die in it would be perfect. I ended up having to get fabric one piece from the manufacturer and two pieces from other stores in order to match the piece that I got at one store. But I ended up with all the same colors, the color family, the dye lots were exactly the same because it had the manufacturer and on the receipt, it had the lot number. And then you can order extra fabric if you run short. I'm a little concerned about this piece um, I did try and order more of this. It's no longer being manufactured. So it would just have to be if they could find some from another store. And I had purchased it from Joanne Fabrics. And so right now they're trying to see if they can find it somewhere in the country because um, with the computers they have, they can access anyone's um, merchandise, anybody, anyone's inventory, and see if they might have some of that large um, yardage. And then they would send it to me and I would be very happy and I can continue with my quilt. So today we talked about making quarters. We talked about making our flying geese, this, this pattern, and then putting the rectangle here at the bottom 
to make four quarters that look like this. And then we talked about making our quarters for our corners. And we have four corners, so four quarters. And they all, all four corners consisted of dark, light, light, and medium. And the mediums went to the center. And sometimes with this fabric, sometimes I move it back and forth. Sometimes I call it a medium, sometimes I call it a light, but I enjoy using it either place. Just seems what it fits. And then once you have your quarters, um, once you have your quarters assembled, then you can go ahead and assemble your strips. And then when you assemble them together, then you'll have your nice finished block. So this is called quarter foil. And we will, um, next time we'll continue on and we'll do another block. Enjoy your cutting. Um, to me, the, the hardest part is the cutting. I enjoy the sewing. I enjoy the piecing together. The cutting for me is a struggle. Um, even when I sew clothing or anything, I guess it's because the cutting is your final determination. And so you, once it's cut, it's good. It has to stay. So enjoy your quilting block. Remember that on our um, library website, there's a website that you can um, contact me if you have any quilting questions or concerns. I'm at the library all day Tuesday, Friday afternoon and Saturday. So if you wanna bring your project in, if you need some help, please bring it in. Or if you wanna just bring it in and show it to me, I would love to see it. Um, if you run into a snag, let me know and I'll try very hard to help you figure it out. So have fun and I will see you next time with another quilt block. This quilt block will give you a 12 and a half inch square block when you're finished and that will continue on with our assembly of our quilt. So enjoy, have fun, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.